Hope Spring Hill family, Steve Nethery here, the pastor of Spring Hill Baptist Church. We are glad you are with us today. I just want to highlight the top three before we move into our worship service. The first one is we want to say thank you for practicing the art of invitation. We started that in February of this year and we're halfway through the year. And because you are practicing the art of invitation, uh, we are seeing new faces. We are seeing people accept Jesus Christ. We are seeing people grow in their relationship with Christ. The small group ministry is growing. Our worship services are, are growing. The children's ministry, the youth ministry, people are taking the next steps. So thank you. Second, we want you to continue to practice the art of invitation this summer. Have someone over for a barbecue. Have someone over for a pole party. Go see somebody and sit on the front porch and have some lemonade or sweet tea. And then keep in mind, July the 20th, we'll be at Chris Green Lake for more baptisms. So please continue to practice the art of invitation. It's very biblical. It's very theological. It's very Christ-like. And when we do that, we are creating opportunities for people to follow Jesus. And then the third one. In the digital world, we want you to join us in a three-day three reading plan entitled Three Big Questions, One Little Song. And you can find that on the YouVersion app. And we want to read that together this week. So let's read that together this week. And it's Psalm chapter 19, Three Big Questions, One Little Song. Let's move into worship at this time. Good, mor good morning and welcome. Guys, after a week of vacation Bible school, I don't know if I'm super hyped or super exhausted, but kind of both. And I just want to say, I'm looking out there and the majority of you, this is what I have to say to you. Thank you. Welcome today here and at home, guys. We are so glad you were worshiping with us today. Today, we hope that you, if you haven't connected already, which many of you have because I know you've been working in Vacation Bible School, and you should be feeling extremely blessed because we touched over 100 children plus their families. It was an amazing week. Today, we want you to connect with us, and you can do that in a multitude of ways. You can do that by going onto our website, or you can easily text 434-423-5300. And just text the word CONNECT. We will then make sure that we let you know everything that's going on. Now here at Spring Hill Baptist Church, we are a giving community. During Vacation Bible School, we gave to Feeding Green. And our kids did a great job. They collected, as those children brought in, it was so cute, dimes, nickels, pennies, quarters, over $300. They did a great job. And we're going to be sending that off to them as well as matching it through our mission team because we here love to give to our community and throughout the world. And you can give also by going online, through the mail, through bill pay, or you can go in our app or, again, use that 434-423-5300 and text GIVE. Now, today, we hope that you will have the opportunity to connect with others just by meeting them or maybe joining a small group. But if you would, I would like you to just join me in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for a week that we were so blessed with so many families. God, not just families that attend regularly, but families we've never seen before. We pray that you will work in their lives. And today, just help us to be encouragers of faith. It's in your precious name I pray. Amen. All right, let's stand and worship the Lord this morning together.
right, please be seated. Hi, friends. Welcome to summer. Summer is one of my favorite times of year. I think I like summer so much because I really like being outside when it's warm. I like eating a cold and juicy watermelon. Mm, so good. I like staying outside until the lightning bugs start to come out and the moon comes up. Oh, and I, I do love a good water balloon battle. Now that's a great part of summer. The best part about a water balloon battle on a hot summer day is that by the end of the battle, we all win <laughs> because we're all cooled off by the water. But one of my absolute favorite things about summer is Vacation Bible School. And we just spent a week at Vacation Bible School here at Spring Hill. We were learning about God's incredible world and creation and how each of us are wonderfully made. But one of my favorite kid moments this week was seeing just how wonderfully made kids are. I saw kids encouraging other kids. We were making a constellation craft and it was kind of hard to do at first. And then I saw one seven-year-old say to another seven-year-old, here, let me help you. And then a little bit later I heard, wow, your constellation looks great. Amazing. And then at one point, the whole team was cheering each other on by saying, go orange team, go. It was awesome. It was so encouraging. Well, today's message is in Colossians 3.16, and it says this, Let the message about Christ in all of its richness fill your lives. That means taking the rich, wonderful, amazing words like faith, hope, and love, and letting those words just fill up every molecule of your body. Those encouraging words and the love of God are contagious. I mean, but not like bad contagious, like a bad cough. <laughs> no, the word contagious means likely to spread and affect others. So I want to show you how contagious encouraging words can be by using these two water balloons. I have them tied here to my clothesline. And let's pretend this one is me and I am having a particularly good day. Maybe I had some watermelon. <laughs> and let's pretend this is my friend Mary, and Mary's not having a bad day, but she's not having a great day either. She's just a meh kind of day. Maybe she hasn't had any watermelon. All right, so I come into the room where Mary is, and I start encouraging her. Maybe I share some watermelon with her, and look what happens to Mary. She perks up a bit, gets a little bit of bounce in her. That was contagious. Those encouraging words were contagious, but it happens the other way too. Watch this, watch this. Okay, this is me. Let's say I'm, I'm just hanging out in the room and Mary comes in and Mary says, Christy, Jesus loves you. Look, contagious. It's like we're transferring energy to each other. And scientifically, that's what's happening. But in the spiritual sense, we're encouraging each other and that's contagious. When you share an encouraging word like, how can I help you? Or you can do it, or even a Bible verse, you are filling your life and the other person's life with the richness of God and his love. And the bonus is, is that it's contagious. It spreads and affects others. So I have a challenge for you this week. Number one, find something about summer that you love and share it. Maybe it's watermelon, or maybe it's a water balloon fight. <laughs> or second, this challenge is even more important. Share encouraging words with your friends and your family, and then just watch how those words become contagious. Let me know how it goes. worship.
All right, uh, encouragement. Uh, when somebody encourages you, you are a happier, healthier person. That is a psychological, sociological, medical fact. When you encourage someone, they are a happier, healthier individual, and so are you. When you encourage someone in your family unit, you develop a stronger family unit, stronger, healthier family unit. Studies have been shown over and over again that families have these difficult discussions, arguments, tension, but the families who encourage one another, who celebrate birthdays, who celebrate anniversaries, who sit around the table and talk about their day in a positive way, even in the midst of difficult decisions, in the midst of arguments, in the midst of tension, they are healthier and happier marriages, and they last much longer, and they produce healthy, happy, strong, self-esteem children. In our world in the West, we need happy, healthy, strong, self-esteem children. Parents and grandparents, encourage your children and grandchildren. Look them in the eye. Tell them how good-looking they are, how, how smart they are. Uh, I mean, even if you have to stretch the truth. <laughs> in this congregation, if you tell a child or a teenager how good-looking they are and how smart they are, you are not stretching the truth. We heard it two weeks ago uh, when we were on a mission trip from other church leaders how awesome three teenagers were in this church. We heard it over and over again at supper time and at breakfast from other people, people had, who had only encountered them for a couple of days. When you and I receive encouragement at work, when you and I give encouragement at work, it creates a healthy, happier, more productive culture in that work environment. So just, just encouraging words. Just glad you came today. How was your weekend? Great job on that project. Thanks for meeting that deadline. That was very important to the company. Just those words offered to you and when you and I offer them to other people whom we work with or whom we maybe oversee and supervise, we create. You can, you can find this on Indeed. You can find this on LinkedIn. You can find this on Monster. That one of the things that employees are looking for today is a place where they are encouraged regularly. Smart companies are picking up on it. And they have created these whole game rooms where there's break, breaks that take place and their employees are more productive at ping pong <laughs> and pool and darts. And therefore, they meet more deadlines, they sell more whatever, and they make more money. And companies like that, just by offering encouraging words or offering some kind of encouraging service to somebody. When we encourage little ones, we boost their self-esteem in a huge way. When we compliment their outfit, when we serve them, when we assist them, when we come alongside them. I saw this with people this past week, working in the kitchen, working in the fellowship hall, serving people a meal. They didn't have to say a whole lot. They just served people a meal. And the more people came in, 
the louder it got. And you know how most of the time when people are eating, it becomes quiet? That was not the case. <laughs> because when you have children running all over the place, uh, you have pizza. I, I think we vacuumed up more grapes this past week <laughs> than anything else. One guy put it this way. If we let that vacuum cleaner sit long enough, we're going to have some nice wine. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering if anybody else had noted that, and he had. It was fantastic. But they encouraged people by, they didn't say a word, really. They just served them water and lemonade and the meal. They just served the people. When you and I serve someone, husbands, when we serve our wives, wives, when you served your husbands, when we serve our children, we, we give encouragement to them. By the way, studies have shown, if you are an encourager, and you're like, well, that, that's, not, that's not my thing, but it can become your thing. If you are an encourager, you have more friends who care about you. And when you need help, they will be there. I don't mean friends that are on a list on the internet. I mean friends that when you call upon them, they will be there. If you are an encourager, you have a more positive outlook on life. If you are an encourager, not just receiving encouragement, which we need that, but if you are an encourager yourself, you have a more positive outlook on life. Studies have shown that people who are encouragers to others make it through surgeries better, make it through trials better, and make it through difficult times in life better. That's just a fact. So encouragement is very, very important. So right now, would you just stand up and visit with one another and just whatever kind of encouraging word you want to give, like, I'm so glad you're here today, or VBS was awesome, or man, you have a great looking shirt on today, or hey, did you get a haircut? You need one, okay? I mean, what? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> encouraging words, go. I'll bring it to a close, go. All right, if you'll uh, move back to your seat. That was beautiful. Move back to your seat. Here, here's the ask for today. Good stuff, man. Here's the ask. Here's what I want you to do. Out of God's word today, out of God's word today, Colossians chapter 3, verses 15, 16, and 17. Take your Bible and go there. Take your version app. Take your smart device, just search in your search engine, Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 and 17. Here's, here's going to be the ask that I want you to walk away with today, okay? Not a challenge, just an ask. Be an encourager today and this week. We're moving into July the fourth week. What a fantastic week here in America. Let's be an encourager. That's all I'm asking today. As, as a fellow follower of Jesus Christ. Let's be an encourager. And here's three very simple ways. There's more, but these are not out of a woman's day. These are not out of GQ. These are not out of some pop little magazine that's popular and that's on your coffee table. All right? This is God's living word. By the way, these Colossian people, they weren't being real encouraging to one another. You can see in, one, two, in, verse, in chapters 1 and 2 
where there's some backbiting, there's some arguing, and by the way, they're arguing about traditions. Should we have the piano or should we have the guitar? Now, that's not what they were arguing about, but that's what we argue about today. Should the carpet be red like it's been for 175 years? Or should we actually update or, or should we actually update it? Because we're in the year 2024, not 1776. They were arguing about some Jewish traditions. They had accepted Jesus Christ. And some people were following up and saying, well, that's good, but if anyone ever comes to you in your Christianity and says, I'm glad you accepted Jesus Christ, but, or however, you do not need to debate with them. You do not need to hang out with them. You don't need to move into a dialogue with them when they ring the doorbell at your house. You can pray with them and send them on. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, that is it. Period. And so Paul has to write this letter because Epaphras says, Hey, Paul, we're arguing about should we celebrate this feast or this feast, and should we do these things, and how should this happen, and shouldn't we just be here on Sunday, or should we be at the synagogue? Some people are worshiping under a tree. Some people are meeting in the house over here, and that's causing some, some tension. You see how all this outward stuff causes tension? And Paul's like, no, we're going to get to the heart of the matter where life is, and the heart of the matter is Jesus Christ. Here's Colossians chapter 3. 15 and 17, these three little simple things will help us be an encourager. That's the ask. I want you to be an encourager. Here's Colossians 3, verses 15 and 17. I'm reading out of the New American Standard just because I have read out of that uh, for years, okay? Verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called one body, and be thankful Here's the thought on this one. Just let the peace of Christ rule in your life. And when that happens, you can be one body, and you can be a little more thankful. But just let the peace of Christ rule in your life. I was visiting with a dear friend yesterday, and he and I both knew instantly that in this verse, if you are not filled and experiencing the peace of Christ there's no way you can give to others. You can't give that encouraging word. You can't give the money. You can't give of your time. You can't give of your service. Because, see, if you're living in anxiety and stress and you're overwhelmed and your schedule is very busy and you are booked and we're only in early into the summer and you're already experiencing what I call mid-summer exhaustion there's no way that God can use you in a bold rich way so let the peace of Christ just rule and so allow just allow P permit so 15 let the peace of Christ rule in, in your heart into which you are called to be one body and be thankful so be an encourager just let that peace of Christ rule. Well, well, how do you do that? You quit worrying and you start praying. You have a thankful heart. You look across the aisle of someone and you realize they're a part of this body. They look across the aisle and they realize you're a part of this body. And you just let that peace overcome you. Jesus said, peace I'm giving to you. When his disciples were about to go through a rough time, peace I'm giving to you. Not as the world is going to give to you. But this peace that I'm giving to you, it's deep, it's meaningful. So don't let your heart be troubled, and neither let it be anxious. So when your heart becomes troubled, when your heart and your life becomes anxious, allow. That's the word, just allow. Permit. Give way. Yield to God. 
You don't have to ask for more peace. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. We humble ourselves before God and just allow, allow God, that word let can be permit, give way, allow, concede. For those of you who like sports, tap out. And say, God, your peace here. Your peace. And that way you can go into the meeting and be more encouraging. That way you can sit down to dinner and be more encouraging. That way in, when you go into your small group Bible study, you can be more encouraging. That way when someone says, how was your week? Your answer will be more encouraging. So just allow. Be an encourager. That's the ask. You do that by just allowing the peace of God to rule, not your stress, not your anxiety, not your schedule, not your bills, not the expense of the vacation, the peace of God. So now, whoever you came with this morning, even if it's by yourself, Take your hand or their hand. Go ahead. Your hand or their hand. And whisper to each other. Whisper to each other a prayer asking for the peace of God. And just say, God, I'm, I'm allowing your peace. I'm humbling myself. And may your peace overwhelm. Go ahead. Just whisper it. So in this series, A Taste of Heaven, we're walking through Colossians. You'll see it up here on the screen, A Taste of Heaven, Living in the Fullness of Christ. Today's message is Speak Encouragement. Uh, the ask is, just want you to, to be an encourager. So when, if you're going to speak it, you need to live it, right? And if you're going to live it, you'll need to speak it. And so just speak that encouragement. And this word allow is used all throughout this passage. Permit, let, give way, tap out, concede, give up. And let, right there, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Allow the peace of Christ to rule in your heart. And you will be more of an encourager. And we, we heard the benefits and we just saw the benefits of encouraging. You just tasted the benefit of whispering a prayer about peace. Verse 16, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness. A brief thought on this one. Allow the word of God, allow these hymns, Allow these choruses, allow the psalms, allow the proverbs to rejuvenate your life. Look at the words when we're singing these songs and don't just sing them. Look at them. Some of them will ca cause you to bow your head and confess your sin. Others will cause you to raise your hands. And you're like, I've never raised my hand in a worship service, and I never will raise my <laughs> hand in a worship service. <laughs> well, well, then you need to read the Bible because it's full of it. It's full of people raising their hands. It's full of people yelling out God's name. You'll yell out your sports team's name, and you'll yell at the referee, and uh, you'll yell at your kid, and all right? Uh, it's all throughout Scripture. I mean, in, in Timothy, Paul tells the men, men, I want men everywhere. I want godly men everywhere raising their hands in prayer. Now, that's more of a cultural comment because that's how they would pray. But what can we walk away with that? Well, we need to be godly. 
there's nothing wrong with raising your hands, and there's many postures of prayer, and one of the postures of prayer is raising your hands, all right? And you can see the other postures are laying down on the ground in ashes, saying, God, I'm sorry, all throughout Scripture, but it's, it's there. Clapping your hands is very biblical. But allow God's Word. In small group today, allow the Word to penetrate into your life and rejuvenate you, fill you up. By the way, does anyone in here like riches? Okay, <laughs> y'all all need help. <laughs> if you don't like riches, give all your money this morning. And I will go to the financial team to say, hey, I like riches. Can we do something about that? L look what it says. Verse 16. Look at this. It was on the screen earlier. Christy talked about this. Let the word of Christ richly dwell in you. Rich soil. Let it dwell in you richly. Allow it to overtake you, to overwhelm you richly. Allow it to rejuvenate you. Allow the person who's singing behind you and you hear their voice to rejuvenate you and energize you. When you're in small group, allow the word of God that's being discussed to energize you and rejuvenate you and renew you in a very rich way. Allow the Psalms that you're reading through to rejuvenate you. The word of God, you know, Baptist are founded on this, oh, we believe the Bible is the Bible. And it has caused more arguments in the past 150 years than anything. It actually should rejuvenate us and make us lively and gracious and truthful and people of integrity and people who stand out and who are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. That's what the Word of God should do. That's what singing these hymns should do. That's what listening to one another sing should do. That's what when you're greeting one another and encouraging one another should do. And he's saying, let it happen. Allow it to happen. When you come into this building, when you go into your small group, when you're at the fire pit, wherever your group meets, when you're in the book club, allow the word of God to rejuvenate you. When you're memorizing that verse, let it rejuvenate you. Not just give you some information. The Word of God is not about information. It is the living, active, alive, God-breathed Word of God. You know when God created Adam, he took some dust, spit on it, wrote He, he had the first like little dirt clawed fight, okay? And, he, and, and then he goes, the word is ruach. I love that Hebrew word. He goes, ruach. Boom. Adam is formed. When you and I are studying God's Word. Uh, I heard it Wednesday. Ladies studying the Word of God, getting to know one another. Last Sunday, I heard it up, up here. I heard it in the youth ministry last Sunday. The Word of God being breathed into people. It's like you're being resuscitated. You're dying, and the Word of God comes into you, and you're being resuscitated. You're being rejuvenated. Let that allow it to happen. And then the last thought, so that we can all be an encourager, that's the ask. The last thought is this, verse 17. He's telling these people who have been bickering, they've been arguing. He's like, look, experience peace. Look, when you get together, if someone's playing the mandolin, let them play the mandolin. If you have to sing a cappella that Sunday because everyone's out of town on the music team, don't say, everyone's out of town on the music team, and I'm not going to go to worship. No. You come to worship, and you sing louder than you've ever sung. That's what you do. But that's not what we do. <laughs> we do totally the opposite. He's saying, no, when you come together, your songs, the scriptures you're seeing, the telling the story, the word of God, even when you start cross-referencing and you're no longer paying attention to the sermon, which is fine. You're cross-referencing. You're studying God's Word. Let it sink in and bring that re renewal and that rejuvenation. Let Come with that attitude, and then you'll leave here. You will be an encourager. And by the way, the person who waits on you at lunch will appreciate it because your words will be nice and your tip will be big. 
and they really like the big tip. <laughs> really. And the last one, in everything that you do. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I have trouble preaching this one. Everyone over here, look at me. I have trouble preaching this one. Not necessarily because of my actions, but because of my words. In the middle, I have trouble preaching this one. But this is God's word, not Steve Nethery. And so I've, I've been confessing my sin all week. All right? Over here. I have trouble preaching this one. In everything that you do, whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So in everything that you do, allow God to be represented in your language ah, <laughs> and in your actions. In everything you do, those little thoughts that you have in your mind about the person that didn't take off fast enough when the light went green. <laughs> the thoughts that you have in your mind when you walk out of a church meeting about church growth and you have disagreed with someone. Let everything you do in word or deed, you do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Allow Christ to be represented in everything you do. Allow Christ to be represented in everything you do. In your home, in your work, in your words, in your language, in your, when you're speaking an encouraging word. Allow Christ to be represented so peace will help you be an encourager. The word of God, singing these hymns together, singing these songs together. Those of you online, now I know some of you, and you're like, I don't sing real good. Well, that's the beauty of worshiping online. You're by yourself in your home. If you need to, go into your bathroom. Everybody sings good in the bathroom, okay? <laughs> I'm serious. You get in your car, you turn on the radio... Are you a good singer? Oh, yeah. But if we ask you to be a part of choir, oh, I don't sing very good. <laughs> Blows my mind. Sing these hymns. Let the word of God be sung. Let it, let it en enrich us and rejuvenate us, and then let Christ be represented in everything we say, everything we do. Let Christ be represented. Would you say this word with me? Allow. Say it with me. Allow. allow. Just Allow. Permit, give way, humble yourself before the Lord, tap out, concede, yield to Christ. Some years ago, Max Lucado, prolific author, pastor at a church for many years, uh, wrote a little book, and he put this in there about dogs and how we could learn from dogs. 8 a.m., oh boy, dog food. My favorite. 9.30 a.m. Oh, boy, a car ride, the dog says. My favorite. 9.40. Oh, boy, a walk at the park. My favorite. 10.30. Oh, boy, another car ride. My favorite. 11 o'clock, the treat. My favorite. 11.30 uh, a.m. Oh, boy, more dog food. My favorite. 12 p.m. Oh, boy, the kids. My favorite. 1 p.m. Oh, boy. The backyard. My favorite. 2 p.m. The squirrel. My favorite. 4 p.m. Oh, boy. Kids again. My favorite. 5 p.m. Food. My favorite. 5.30 p.m. Mom. My favorite. 6 p.m. Playing ball. My favorite. 8.30 p.m. Sleeping in my master's bed. Say it, my favorite. 6 a.m., Christ in me. 7 a.m., Christ in me. Thank you for catching on. Walking into work, Christ in me. Okay, 
enjoying lunch. Christ in me. Shopping for groceries. Christ in me. Meeting the deadline. Christ in me. Picking up the children. Teaching your child at home. Christ in me. Somehow. Prepping dinner. Meeting in a church meeting. You're sick, okay? <laughs> we have awesome. On vacation. Oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Out to dinner. Ordering pizza. Stuck in traffic. In Jesus Christ, all of our life can actually be our favorite. All of it. I don't like saying that. Man, I don't like saying that. The Bible says it. So we have to say it, and then we get to live it. Baptisms, my favorite. Singing a closing song. Giving encouraging words. Receiving encouraging words. Would you please stand together? We're going to sing this song. Myself and two others are going to move out so that we can prep for baptism. After this song, and we want you to decide to be an encourager today, and this song is very encouraging, in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, we will have the baptism right here. Children will come down front to observe this, and that's okay. Um, anyone who works with the youth and anyone on the youth leadership team, I want you to come down front. If you need to, you sit on the edge because we're baptizing two youth today who through the children's ministry and who through the youth ministry have accepted Jesus Christ and they're going to let you know through baptism, okay? And so that'll happen afterwards. We'll be out of here at about 5 after um, 10 o'clock, so hang with us. Some of you will need to move to children's ministry. I think we, we understand that. This will be on video. You can view it at that time also, all right? But in Christ, in Christ. Let's be an encourager this week. And so Noah and Kaylee, if you'll step on out, I'll meet you right out here and we'll find a place for all of us to change into our baptism clothes.
thank you so much for worshiping with us today, and we encourage you to stay around for this baptism. And I would like to revisit the top three with you. The first one, creating opportunities through invitation. Now, I'm going to say, you guys have this one. Man, do we do a job at inviting here. You are wonderful encouragers, and I today thank you. So continue now. As you have that opportunity to invite, you can invite people to attend that have been invited to Vacation Bible School. Encourage them to grow in their faith. And through that faith, you can also help them to make summer connections. You know, in July, on a Saturday, July 20th, we are going to have another baptism. So if you've encouraged someone and you see their walk of faith growing and you know that they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and they have said, yep, this is it. I know that I have Jesus in my heart and I am going to heaven and they have not yet been baptized. They can do that. We're going to have a cookout and a baptism at Chris Green Lake. Now what that looks like in the past has been people that don't even go to our church join us to eat. We encourage their faith and Sometimes people that didn't plan to be baptized get baptized. So here is our opportunity to be encouragers for that. That is going to be 11 to 1 on July 20th. You might want to put that in your calendar on your phone. July 20th, 11 o'clock, Chris Green Lake. And lastly, we want to dive into the Word. Now here at Spring Hill Baptist Church, I am part of a devotion. And that devotion time for me is every morning... I join with a group of you, a huge group, through the YouVersion app. It's the Little Brown Bible. I love to be able to see the comments and the thoughts and how God's Word is working in your lives through that app. It's my time of connection with God, but it's also my time of connecting with some of you. This particular week, we are doing one called Three Big Questions, One Little Psalm. Okay. Yeah, that could be bad. <laughs> Three big questions, one little psalm. And we would love to see you join us. You can do that just by clicking that app, finding friends. Guys, find me. I'm in there. I'll share it with you. You can find Christy. Christy Ferguson shares these every week. We would love to have you be a part of that because we really do want to connect with you. So I'm going to ask you that we close together in prayer. And let's just begin rejoicing as we encourage one another. Father God, we thank you for Spring Hill Baptist Church. We thank you for a church that is full of people that love you, love to connect with others, and connect with you on a daily basis. Bless these people that are going to be baptized today. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Hang around. When someone decides to follow Christ, their life is changed forever. Death turns to life. Despair changes to hope. Dark becomes light. It's a deep, quiet moment that could easily be kept hidden. But a change this profound can't stay a secret for long. It's time for the world to see what God has done. For we were once in darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. Baptism is an act of faith. It's a celebration, a beacon cutting through the fog, a message to the world that a lost cause has been redeemed, that God is here, and he is transforming lives. So embrace this moment. Declare his glory. And let your light shine.
9 a.m. worship service, we are going to baptize first Noah Gonzalez. We will then baptize his sister uh, Kaylee. They have been in vacation Bible school some years ago. They have been in the youth ministry. So I, I am baptizing them, uh, really representing the children's ministry and representing the youth ministry. So very humbly representing uh, those groups of people. And so those who are on the youth leadership team, I want you to feel free to stand up and come up on the stage. Those of you who teach in the youth ministry, please draw nigh, please draw near. I want them to see you when they're being baptized, okay? Uh, because you have had a profound impact. And so uh, first will be uh, Noah. Noah, if you'll come down, we'll help you down here, man. Uh, before I baptize Noah, I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, Noah, his words are few, <laughs> but his character is true. Amen. Noah, that's integrity. People want integrity in today's world. They want people who are honest, reliable, faithful. He's also an excellent athlete, and he catches everyone by surprise at Fusion when we're playing these sports games. <laughs> because he doesn't come across cocky or anything like that. He just gets in there and he wins. <laughs> and you like to win, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in Jesus Christ, you have won. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? All right. So, Noah, we as a church, the children's ministry, the youth ministry, we, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My and so Noah uh, chose a verse. We, we ask, usually ask everybody to do this before they get baptized. Yeah, choose yeah, a verse that yeah. they're going to be baptized with. Um, so Noah chose 1 Corinthians 13, 11. So when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. We're helping, as we're helping Kaylee Gonzalez in the water, before I forget, would you read her passage of scripture? Kaylee chose Ephesians 5.1, imitate God in everything you do because you are his dear children. Uh, this, this is Kaylee Gonzalez. Uh, she is tender hearted, compassionate. She writes letters to this day. She has pen pals whom she writes letters to. She's an encourager. She's excellent with children. Uh, she is just very kind to everyone she comes across. Amen. Everyone out there, can we use a little more kindness in America today? Yes. yes. And so, Kaylee, we thank God for you. On behalf of this church, uh, the children's ministry, the youth ministry, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. All right. So, if you'll, yeah, there you go. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. I, I don't have an order of service, so I'm going to let somebody else that has that tell you what to do. Okay? Uh, actually, I'm going to close with a brief word of prayer. That's what I'm seeing the signal for. If you'll please stand together. On your way out, after this prayer, give somebody an encouraging word. In the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, may we be encouragers. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Give someone a word of encouragement, please.